Uh, Mark, if one of the things that absolutely drives me crazy about the MLS is international breaks in South America, in Europe. If the national teams are playing, the league goes on hiatus. We have the Whitecaps looking at, in my opinion, losing their most valuable player to go and sit on the bench for Costa Rica. How dumb is this? Well, he might not. He might play, start, might not well, sit on the bench. But either way, it's, it's a big blow, and you're not the only one who's upset about it. I mean, it, it drives fans crazy. I think. Look, the MLS schedule is, is different. The calendar is different. We know that. Aside from shifting. To, uh, to a winter league, which I think would be a foolish idea. You know, they've got to find a way to find more breaks in the schedule the way it is. I don't think you can extend the season and just add bye weeks because I don't think, uh, the season's long enough. I, yeah. mean, I don't think fans are going to be engaged for even longer than it is. So where can you find those breaks? You can either, you know, try and cut a week out of the playoffs. I don't see that happening. Or you try and get the regular season games down. They're at 34. Can they get to 32 or even 30 and, and take you know, another couple of bye weeks to, to stretch things out. Not just give teams um, the chance to, to let their players go on these international breaks without it hurting them, but maybe um, allow them to compete more in the, in the CONCACAF Champions League. Well, if it was me, I'd get rid of that insane, ridiculous, time-wasting exercise called the All-Star Game. And I know we probably won't see the international preseason tours end because they do j spin money off there. But honestly, those pale in comparison to the games we're seeing right now. And is there a call? Like, are these teams upset that they're going to be missing best players at a crucial time of the yeah, year? Yeah, I mean, you've got to wade through all, all the PR because it's obviously there's relationships here between clubs and country and it's, and it's sensitive and the players don't want to say the wrong thing because they want to stay in the coaches' good books at it, on both sides, it puts everyone in a bad situation. Yeah. Um, the truth of the matter is, of course, your coach, the, the coach is always going to say they're happy for their players to go away and play for the countries. The reality is, no, they want them in their lineup. Of course, they're, these coaches' jobs depend on winning MLS games. They want their best lineup. The fans want to see the best players. The players, of course, have, I think, interests. They're, they're pulled in two directions. Want to play for the if you're Campbell team. Watson, yeah. you want to play in a World Cup one day. You want to be on the national team radar. You don't want to piss off your national team coach. So if you're called, you want to go. Um, I, it puts the players and the fans, most of all, I think, in bad positions, and that's not right. And you can say every game is equally important over a 34-game schedule. The reality is these four, as you come down the stretch, feel more important. You're deciding playoff positioning. You're deciding teams whether you get in the playoffs or not. Uh, and to have teams go up against each other and have their lineups um, you know, strengthened or weakened potentially by call-ups, I, I think it's, it's just wrong at this time of year. And if, if the MLS is certainly one more break they're going to add, it has to be this October yeah. window. Well, I'm not afraid to piss anyone off. M MLS, get your head out of your ass. You've got to fix this because you're a laughing stock and a joke of a league if you don't.